So yeah, welcome to this talk. Um, title is Multi Data Center Strategies for Data Services. It was meant to be a full session, so I had to cut, cut it down into 10 minutes, which I didn't achieve. So it's going to be a little bit more. And also, um, a few words about myself. I'm Julian Fischer, CEO of any Nines. Um, probably you might have heard of us. We focus on uh, data service automation for Cloud Foundry and other platforms. Um, so a little disclaimer, as I said, the talk is actually meant to be longer than that. Um, so we are going to scratch the surface and at several times I will have to overfly, uh, oversimplify things to a degree that I would throw tomatoes at myself. So if that's the case, feel free to grab me later in uh, outside and we can have discussions or questions afterwards, all right? So um, the reason I would like to talk about this topic is because um, during our work um, with customers, we've seen uh, that topic being discussed um, widely, and also that um, in many cases, some elementary understanding of uh, the do's and don'ts are kind of missing. So um, because of the length of the talk, I'm trying to um, getting through the, the basic scenarios and definitions a little, and then talk a little about what we can actually achieve in the terms of data service automation and about the, the multi-data center uh, topics as such. So I think one of the most important things is that when you think about having multiple data centers is that you actually be clear about what you actually want to achieve. Um, sounds obvious, but... Um, I mean, having two data centers can be very, very different. So the term, in fact, actually gives you no information so that you can, whatever, present some fancy slides and tell somebody what this means for data services. It's just there's no connection between having multiple data centers and uh, a good design to do it. So you have to go down the road and make um, you know, yourself requirements and, uh, and define goals that you want to fulfill. So in those conversations, um, you know, many different motivations may be of relevance. Um, for example, you could um, have an audience that's spread around, around the globe so that you want to serve content uh, from a nearby data center instead of having a, um, a long distance um, connection with a lot of latency. So lowering latencies might be um, uh, an interesting motivation, and of course, availability. So in case something happens, so for example, a local disaster, such a fire, uh, sadly, California uh, experiencing something like that, at the moment could uh, you know, put a threat on your data center. So there are things in between. For example, like, uh, do you want to have a load scale out, or do you want to have a capacity scale out? Do you want to provide redundancy and load balancing? This, things are kind of interconnected. And you have to go through your particular scenario and define what you actually want to achieve. So for us, um, and we've been serving Cloud Foundry as a public offering since 2013, We've started on vSphere, we moved to OpenStack, we had a lot of regrets, so we moved to uh, vSphere and AWS. So we've been running Cloud Foundry, uh, and we're talking about migrating customer applications in every of those cases, migrations. Um, that we've learned that we have to be infrastructure agnostic because infrastructure are technologies that still change a lot, um, either because it means that you have to learn that whatever the infrastructure you've got is not the best or that another infrastructure provider becomes more important or cheaper, uh, or you want to whatever go to uh, a, a geographical area where a certain provider is uh, more accepted than another. So Asia, for example, I heard local companies uh, preferring Microsoft Azure uh, over, over Amazon, where in the US it might be the other way around. So in our platform strategy, we always had the assumption that we would like to have a homogeneous operational model, which means I won't have the similar operational procedures for running a Postgres than for running a Redis. And we want to have that across multiple data centers without tying into the technical details too much. So I've seen customers who are running on OpenStack and they're happy with it. Mm. And therefore, they accept 
uh, infrastructure specific ties. So this is one of those design goals you have to uh, be conscious about. That's all I'm saying. It's no right or wrong. It's just something you have to uh, be clear, and then you can start thinking about the data service design. So just to have a common understanding, um, there are two major scenarios we, uh, w we've seen repeatedly. The first one is where you have multiple data centers being in a close range. I think Switzerland is a good example, right? Because it's, it's smaller, and uh, I know a company who have multiple data centers, and they have the luck to also own the data center connections between the data centers. So they, that's a good example for uh, a close-range data center because you have a geographically close, uh, uh, you know, data center data centers being so close to another. So I'm talking about less than a few hundred kilometers, ideally less than 100 or 50 kilometers, right? Um, so you have a high bandwidth, you have a low latency, and therefore a reliable connection. So this makes you know a few tricks more appealing than if you were in another scenario, which we'll look at a little later. Um, we're talking about the possibility to stretch the infrastructure. Um, we've seen customers do that. We we are not infrastructure experts as such. I won't you know say anything against it, despite of my, f my stomach feeling would like uh, suggest that this might be a problem unless you really, you're really, really sure about the quality of the connection between the data centers. So in the scenario of a stretched infrastructure, you look at um, um, possibly several data centers and somehow you manage them to get a shared network happen. So. Um, in, in that case, each of the data center has one or multiple availability zones. So which is already interesting because look at that scenario, you see two data centers and three availability zones in total. So we've also seen two data centers with each one availability zone, obviously leading to the problem that any quorum-based data service won't, won't be free of the split brain problematic because a quorum requires two n plus one nodes, so at least three. So in this case, you have three nodes, but um, we are looking at uh, what kind of disaster. Why, why are we going to a second data center? So the reason is not because data center one is full, maybe because of redundancy. However, a data center might be troubled entirely. So if you lose data center one in that scenario, you're losing two or three availability zones. And for most data servers, this means either uh, losing the capability of uh, electing a leader or even losing data, depending on the data service you're looking at. So you could add a second. Um, a second availability zone, a data center too, but the problem here obviously still is quorum because um, one of the most likely scenario here is that you have a connection problem between data center one and data center two, and then you have a split brain, a split brain problem because a cluster manager usually running on, you know, on nodes and the nodes are sp uh, um, uh, spread across the availability zones they would be split in the middle. So there would be two cluster nodes on the left side, two cluster nodes on the right sides, and none of these cl partial clusters would be able to determine whether they are the new majority. So leader election, impossible. So if you add another availability zone to one of the data centers, you're basically going back to the first scenario where if data center one goes down, you still lose a majority of the nodes. Um, and also, it really depends on the data service on how uh, on, and whether uh, the data is lost at that point. So again, uh, no, in, a, in, a, in most of the data services, you'd be able to cover uh, and survive two, losing two out of five nodes. So only the scenario of losing data service one would be really, really problematic. Still, what's the point, having two data centers then? So another scenario could be to have three data centers with each uh, having one availability zone. Well, that's uh, a way to go. Mm. And of course, you could go for you know all in and having three availability zones, having a local um, a failover and three data centers. But you know, who would be able to pay for that? Nobody would ever do that. 
So in any case, um, you know, the stretched infrastructure scenario has the appealing part that you can just, you know, declare the availability zones um, and not tell Bosch so much about the existence of different data centers and let the, the uh, virtual machines being spread across availability zones. So in that particular scenario, you would be distributing virtual machines across three uh, data centers with minimal impact to the data service automation. So in our case, data services will be provisioned with Bosch, so we'll just you know, create a, a Postgres cluster, and the Postgres cluster would be automatically sp spread across data, uh, data centers. I'm not advertising the solution because you know, deep down, I, I don't trust the stretch data center, so I would be careful with that. But it's an appealing idea, and I've seen people looking at it, I've actually seen people doing it, and so far they didn't tell me that everything, you know, went south. But so, if you have um, data centers close by, whatever scenario will work for a multi-region setup. Obviously, also works for a setup where the data centers are close by. Just a question whether, you know, this gives you any benefit. So let's look into uh, a, a scenario which is pretty common to, to, to countries such as the US, where you have East Coast, West Coast kind of um, scenarios. So your data centers are widely spread. And with that, even if you own uh, you know, connections, I'm pretty sure that it's just the physics that will give you some fluctuation in bandwidth and latency. So I'm not really sure whether you want to go with the stretch infrastructure in that scenario, because it's just it takes some time. So um, scenarios I've seen is uh, that you have multiple Cloud Foundry uh, instances or foundations, however you want to call them. Uh, and um, so, for example, three data centers and three Cloud Foundry foundations. But that immediately leads to the question, who's orchestrating uh, those Cloud Foundries? Who's synchronizing those Cloud Foundries? Because, uh, spoiler alert, Cloud Foundry doesn't really support that, at least not at the moment. I'm pretty sure that they got something on the roadmap, and if somebody knows something about that, maybe it would be an interesting question afterward. Um, so, you know, next thing, uh, how do you deal with multiple cloud foundries? Um, I've seen people using CI pipelines and, you know, load balancers in the front and, you know, proxy services on the front that will replay activities towards multiple cloud foundries and try to keep their state uh, similar. Now, the thing with that kind of approach is always the question, what does it mean for the data services? So, so, so long as the data services are, uh, are, are not connected, the question is, can you really assure that each Cloud Foundry with all the data services is in the same state? So I wouldn't bet my life on that, because it's really hard to achieve. And also, similar to a database, you'd have the problem that if one Cloud Foundry is unavailable, whatever changes are to be committed to that Cloud Foundry would, be st would have to be stored in a kind of transaction log and then replayed once it goes up. But then a change could you know, be different depending on when it's actually executed. So not really sure. So you have a lot of trouble with that one because you have to monitor, you have to perform failover, and you have to think about what, what actually happens if a Cloud Foundry goes away and comes back. So another way could be that you have a primary Cloud Foundry, you know, which is kind of the master-slave scenario, where this would be your multi-master scenario, and this would be a, a kind of you know, primary-secondary scenario. Um, so you have one Cloud Foundry you're, you're writing to, and, and you're trying to replicate all the changes to that Cloud Foundry to the secondary ones. So in such a scenario, what you could do is having um, a database. I'm using Postgres as an example. We, we are using Postgres with asynchronous replication. And asynchronous replication is pretty tolerant when it comes to fluctuating bandwidth and you know, latency. So uh, in a multi-region setup, uh, it's something you could, you, could, you could do. So in that scenario, you would be writing to uh, a master database uh, in a primary Cloud Foundry, with maybe because the request hit that particular Cloud Foundry. And then you'd replicate the changes to databases in uh, other Cloud Foundry foundations or other re remote regions. 
When it comes to automation, this is something that seems to me kind of doable. So we could have a service broker that uh, triggers a Bosch deployment either in multiple Bosches or you know, uh, having a Bosch that supports multiple uh, infrastructures. So you could provide on the level of, of behind the service broker an automated, automated awareness of different regions. So doable. But the problem then would be um, when you look at asynchronous replication, the inherent drawback is having a replication lag. So we'll look uh, at that a little later, what it means to have an asynchronous replicating database. So one of the questions I'm being asked a lot is, is there a generic way to make data services multi-DC capable? So we're having a framework automating data service. So we've been looking at that. And the answer clearly is no because data services are vastly different. Even when you know that's an asynchronous replication, their implementation might be so different that you have to look at the particular data service and its very specific operational model to see what it means to make it uh, distributed across data, service, uh, data centers, or even if it, if it makes sense at all. Another commonly asked question was, does multi uh, is multi-region awareness a matter of the application or the data service layer? And I think the answer to that is, um, is not clearly given, so it really depends. It depends on the design goals, on your data center topology, on the data service you, you're using, and the application architecture you're looking at. But if you force me to give you, you know, some kind of navigational uh, knowledge, it wouldn't be much, but at least I could say that it is a data service matter if the data service is inherently designed to do it. So if you look at... Um, uh, technology such as Cassandra, where you can uh, configure the replication behavior particular to your certain use case. That is surely something that, uh, well, it's some kind of in between because you're still, it's still application specific, but also it has a data server side to it. And it's data service automation matter looking at the Postgres example, where Postgres gives you the ability to replicate, but it doesn't give you a cluster manager. So it doesn't give you failure detection, doesn't give you the automation that needs to be executed once a leader election takes place. So there are still planks to fill in, but at least you have the tooling to do that. So I'm pretty sure there are a lot of data services that are inherently not designed to, to do multi-TC scenarios, and in those cases, you're most likely up to do it on the application level or choose another data service. But let's just for a second look into the idea of having an asynchronous replicated database in a multi-region environment. You know, you can make that happen. You have your master database uh, on US East and your slave in US West or your primary and your secondary. Um, and as long as the write request to your primary to your application uh, on the primary location is uh, low enough, you won't have problems with that. And I found that picture to be very uh, suitable because um, the replication lag always means that, you know, if you go faster with your car, at some point your dog will start suffering. And same with databases. So if you have uh, databases being widely spread and you, s you start writing to the uh, master database too fast, the replication lag increases and increases. And at some point, the replication is just you know, too, too, way too out of sync and may, may collapse. So it works under certain circumstances. But how can you, how can you, you know, grasp these, these circumstances and um, over a wide, reg, wide range of applications? So it's hard. So my assumption was that in every other case, it's a more kind of application concern. But the conclusion is actually that multi-data awareness is per se not um, a aspect of a platform. It's not something that you just you know enable your platform to operate, and it will be transparent to your developers, and they will just deploy something, and then who? you're going to be multi-data center aware, not without having assumptions about the data service layer and choosing them carefully. However, it is wise to design early for multi-data center awareness, and I've seen customers who've been adding that feature to uh, their platform lately, uh, and starting with one configuration of availability zones and number of data centers and so on. So you have to make those changes and uh, propagate them across the stack, which is costly and time-consuming. So 
in our opinion, the multi-data center awareness um, in general hits the entire stack. So from the data center design to the infrastructure design, how you configure your availability zones, the choice of the data services, and um, possibly the automation when looking at cluster managers and so on. And obviously also your application design where you can still you know, do a lot of tricks. Sorry guys, it was way longer than expected. So thanks a lot and please feel free to blame or ask questions.